the term ephemeris time can in principle refer to time in connection with any astronomical ephemeris. In practice it has been used more specifically to refer to, a former standard astronomical time scale adopted in 1952 by the IAU, and superseded in the 1970s. This time scale was proposed in 1948, to overcome the drawbacks of irregularly fluctuating mean solar time. The intent was to define a uniform time based on Newtonian theory. Ephemeris time was a first application of the concept of a dynamical time scale, in which the time and time scale are defined implicitly, inferred from the observed position of an astronomical object via the dynamical theory of its motion. A modern relativistic coordinate time scale, implemented by the JPL ephemeris time argument F, in a series of numerically integrated development ephemerides. Among them is the DE405 ephemeris in widespread current use. The time scale represented by TEF is closely related to, but distinct from, the TCB time scale currently adopted as a standard by the IAU. Most of the following sections relate to the ephemeris time of the 1952 standard. An impression has sometimes arisen that ephemeris time was in use from 1900, this probably arose because ET though proposed and adopted in the period 1948 to Euro 1952, was defined in detail using formulae that made retrospective use of the epoch date of 1900 January 0 and of Newcomb's tables of the sun. The ephemeris time of the 1952 standard leaves a continuing legacy, through its ephemeris second which became closely duplicated in the length of the current standard SI second. History of ephemeris time, ephemeris time, adopted as standard in 1952, was originally designed as an approach to a uniform time scale, to be freed from the effects of irregularity in the rotation of the Earth, for the convenience of astronomers and other scientists, for example for use in ephemerides of the Sun, the Moon, and the planets. It was proposed in 1948 by G. M. Clements. From the time of John Flamsteed it had been believed that the Earth's daily rotation was uniform. But in the later 19th and early 20th centuries, with increasing precision of astronomical measurements, it began to be suspected, and was eventually established, that the rotation of the Earth showed irregularities on short time scales, and was slowing down on longer time scales. The evidence was compiled by W. de Sitter who wrote If we accept this hypothesis, then the astronomical time, given by the Earth's rotation, and used in all practical astronomical computations, differs from the uniform or Newtonian time, which is defined as the independent variable of the equations of celestial mechanics. De Sitter offered a correction to be applied to the mean solar time given by the Earth's rotation to get uniform time. Other astronomers of the period also made suggestions for obtaining uniform time, including A. Dangen, who suggested in effect that observed positions of the Moon, Sun and planets, when compared with their well-established gravitational ephemerides, could better and more uniformly define and determine time. Thus the aim developed, to provide a new time scale for astronomical and scientific purposes, to avoid the unpredictable irregularities of the mean solar time scale, and to replace for these purposes universal time and any other time scale based on the rotation of the Earth around its axis, such as sidereal time. G. M. Clements made a detailed proposal of this type based on the results of H. Spencer Jones. Clements made it clear that his proposal was intended for the convenience of astronomers and other scientists only, and that it was logical to continue the use of mean solar time for civil purposes. De Sitter and Clements both referred to the proposal as Newtonian or uniform time. D. Brewer suggested the name ephemeris time. Following this, an astronomical conference held in Paris in 1950 recommended that in all cases where the mean solar second is unsatisfactory as a unit of time by reason of its variability, the unit adopted should be the sidereal year at 1900.0, that the time reckoned in this unit be designated ephemeris time, and gave Clemence's formula, for translating mean solar time to ephemeris time. The International Astronomical Union approved this recommendation at its 1952 General Assembly. Practical introduction took some time. Ephemeris time remained a standard until superseded in the 1970s by further time scales. During the currency of ephemeris time as a standard, the details were revised a little. 
the unit was redefined in terms of the tropical year at 1900.0 instead of the sidereal year. And the standard second was defined first as January 31 of the tropical year at 1900.0, and then as the slightly modified fraction 1 slash 31,556,925.9747 instead, finally being redefined in 1967 August in terms of the cesium atomic clock standard. Although ET is no longer directly in use, it leaves a continuing legacy. Its successor time scales, such as TDT, as well as the atomic time scale IAT, were designed with a relationship that provides continuity with ephemeris time. ET was used for the calibration of atomic clocks in the 1950s. Close equality between the ET second with the later SI second has been verified to within one part in 1010. In this way, Decisions made by the original designers of ephemeris time influence the length of today's standard SI second, and in turn, this is a continuing influence on the number of leap seconds which have been needed for insertion into current broadcast time scales, to keep them approximately in step with mean solar time. Definition of ephemeris time Ephemeris time was defined in principle by the orbital motion of the Earth around the Sun. Its detailed definition depended on Simon Newcomb's tables of the Sun, interpreted in a new way to accommodate certain observed discrepancies. In the introduction to Newcomb's tables of the Sun, the basis of the tables includes a formula for the Sun's mean longitude, at a time indicated by interval t reckoned from Greenwich mean noon on 0 January 1900, ls equals 279 a degree 41 feet 48 inches.04 plus 129,602,768.13 t plus 1. 0.0892. Spencer Jones' work of 1939 showed that the positions of the Sun actually observed, when compared with those obtained from Newcomb's formula, show the need for the following correction to the formula to represent the observations, ILS equals plus 1 inch point zero zero plus 2.97 T plus 1.23 T2 plus 0 0.0748 B, where the times of observation are in universal time, not corrected to Newtonian time, and 0.0748b represents an irregular fluctuation calculated from lunar observations. Thus a conventionally corrected form of Newcomb's formula, to incorporate the corrections on the basis of mean solar time, would be the sum of the two preceding expressions, ls equals 279 a degree 41 feet 49 inches point zero four plus 129 million six hundred two thousand seven hundred seventy one point one zero t plus two point three two t two plus zero point zero seven four eight b clemens's 1948 proposal did not adopt a correction of this kind in terms of mean solar time instead the same numbers were used as in newcomb's original uncorrected formula but now in a reverse sense to define the time and time scale implicitly, based on the real position of the Sun, LS equals 279 a degree 41 feet 48 inches point zero four plus 129 million six hundred two thousand seven hundred sixty eight point one three e plus 1.089 e2, where the time variable, here represented as e, now represents time in ephemeris centuries of 36,525 ephemeris days of 86,400 ephemeris seconds. The 1961 official reference put it this way, the origin and rate of ephemeris time are defined to make the sun's mean longitude agree with Newcomb's expression, from the comparison of formulae and, both of which express the same real solar motion in the same real time but on different time scales, Clements arrived at an explicit expression, estimating the difference in seconds of time between ephemeris time and mean solar time, in the sense. Clements's formula, now superseded by more modern estimations, was included in the original conference decision on ephemeris time. In view of the fluctuation term, practical determination of the difference between ephemeris time and UT depended on observation. Inspection of the formulae above shows that the unit of ephemeris time such as the ephemeris second has been for the whole of the 20th century very slightly shorter than the corresponding unit of mean solar time, consistently also with the modern results of Morrison and Stevenson. Implementations Equal secondary realizations by lunar observations equals, 
Although ephemeris time was defined in principle by the orbital motion of the Earth around the Sun, it was usually measured in practice by the orbital motion of the Moon around the Earth. These measurements can be considered as secondary realizations of the primary definition of ET in terms of the solar motion, after a calibration of the mean motion of the Moon with respect to the mean motion of the Sun, reasons for the use of lunar measurements were practically based. The Moon moves against the background of stars about 13 times as fast as the Sun's corresponding rate of motion, and the accuracy of time determinations from lunar measurements is correspondingly greater. When ephemeris time was first adopted, time scales were still based on astronomical observation, as they always had been. The accuracy was limited by the accuracy of optical observation, and corrections of clocks and time signals were published in ARIA. Equal secondary realizations by atomic clocks equals, a few years later, with the invention of the cesium atomic clock, an alternative offered itself. Increasingly, after the calibration in 1958 of the cesium atomic clock by reference to ephemeris time, cesium atomic clocks running on the basis of ephemeris seconds began to be used and kept in step with ephemeris time. The atomic clocks offered a further secondary realization of ET on a quasi-real-time basis that soon proved to be more useful than the primary ET standard, not only more convenient, but also more precisely uniform than the primary standard itself. Such secondary realizations were used and described as ET, with an awareness that the time scales based on the atomic clocks were not identical to that defined by the primary ephemeris time standard, but rather, an improvement over it on account of their closer approximation to uniformity. The atomic clocks gave rise to the atomic time scale, and to what was first called terrestrial dynamical time and is now terrestrial time, defined to provide continuity with ET. The availability of atomic clocks, together with the increasing accuracy of astronomical observations, led to the eventual replacement of the ephemeris time standard by more refined time scales including terrestrial time and barycentric dynamical time, to which ET can be seen as an approximation. Revision of time scales, in 1976 the IAU resolved that the theoretical basis for its current standard of ephemeris time was non-relativistic, and that therefore, beginning in 1984, ephemeris time would be replaced by two relativistic time scales intended to constitute dynamical time scales, terrestrial dynamical time and barycentric dynamical time. Difficulties were recognized which led to these being in turn superseded in the 1990s by time scales terrestrial time, geocentric coordinate time GCT, TCG, and barycentric coordinate time BCT, TCB. JPL ephemeris time argument F, high precision ephemerides of Sun, Moon and planets were developed and calculated at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory over a long period and the latest available were adopted for the ephemerides in the Astronomical Almanac starting in 1984. Although not an IAU standard, the ephemeris time argument TEF has been in use at that institution since the 1960s. The time scale represented by TEF has been characterized as a relativistic coordinate time that differs from terrestrial time only by small periodic terms with an amplitude not exceeding 2 milliseconds of time, it is linearly related to but distinct from the TCB timescale adopted in 1991 as a standard by the IAU. Thus for clocks on or near the GOID, TEF, but not so closely TCB, can be used as approximations to terrestrial time, and via the standard ephemerides TEF is in widespread use. Partly in acknowledgement of the widespread use of TEF via the JPL ephemerides, IAU Resolution 3 of 2006 defined barycentric dynamical time as a current standard. As redefined in 2006, TDB is a linear transformation of TCB. The same IAU resolution also stated that the independent time argument of the JPL ephemeris DE405, which is called TEF, is for practical purposes the same as TDB defined in this resolution. Thus the new TDB, like TEF, is essentially a more refined continuation of the older ephemeris time ET and apart from the 